It's Father's Day weekend, 2023, and my wife and her two brothers have planned to get together in Conway, Arkansas. We could drive there in the car, but that would take eight and a half hours without any stops. Maybe we should fly instead, but can we make it there nonstop? Pre-flight planning with Fourth Flight shows that our home base airfield will be VFR around 10.30 a.m. Looking westward, we'll have scattered broken clouds with bases between four to 5,000 for much of the trip. We'll have a slight headwind down low, but the forecast is for sunny weather as we approach Arkansas. Trip duration should be a little over four hours. Our RV-12 should be able to do that nonstop, so let's go. Here is our little plane, and here she is loaded with baggage and Father's Day gifts. And so, we're off. Climbing out from Pickens County Airport in Georgia, you can see the low-hanging cumulus clouds that were predicted. But they are scattered with wide-open spaces. two happy people looking forward to seeing our family in just four hours from now. And today, we're not using the GoPro, so my wife will be my video photographer for this trip. As we approach the Georgia-Alabama line, we have settled down around 3,000 feet and we have 103 knots ground speed. Today, I'm setting the power based on fuel flow, not RPM or airspeed. I have 20 gallons in the tank, and if I keep the fuel flow at 4 gallons or less, then I will have a 4 hour endurance with 1 hour of fuel left in reserve. So we're cruising at 3.8 gallons per hour. Notice in the upper left corner of the screen that we have dialed up the frequency for Atlanta Center, and we're listening in. At this point, the controller comes on and announces that there is a SIGMET active along our route of flight. This is the Tennessee River as we approach Gunnersville, Alabama, one of our landmarks on the flight. At this point, you can see in the video that we're getting bumped around quite a bit here below the cloud deck. Aware of the SIGMET, we have dialed in the flight service station for the area as we approach Tupelo, Mississippi. At this point, the skies are not threatening but we have dropped down lower to 2,500 feet to remain clear of the clouds. Flight service advises that a line of thunderstorms has developed directly ahead between us and Arkansas, so we decide to land until the weather passes. We elect to land in Oxford, Mississippi, since we have family there. These are aerial views of downtown Oxford and the University of Mississippi. Safely on the ground, this is what the iPhone weather app shows in store ahead of us. The skies now are starting to look a little ominous. It's good to be down here rather than up there. Hours later, FlightAware shows the storms that have now passed and are south of us. There's some red stuff in there. So, as this chart shows the first leg of our trip, we did not make it nonstop to Arkansas. Our destination is just an hour away though, and when we topped off the tanks, we only took on 12 gallons, so we still had two hours of fuel left and could have made the rest of the trip with plenty left over. So, we didn't make it, but because of the not because of the limitations of the plane, but instead because of weather. We spent the night in Oxford with family, and the accommodations were eh, not too shabby. Next day, airplane pre-flighted, then away we go again.
downwind leg departure from Oxford Airport, and we head west to Arkansas. We cross over Sardis Lake just west of Oxford. Big, big lake. For this leg, we will again keep the airplane down low. We want to avoid the Class B airspace around Memphis that way. Since we have a full tank of gas now, we're going to use a higher power setting for the one hour flight. Our goal now is just to get there quickly as possible. Western Mississippi has a lot of trees, but as we get near to and into Arkansas, we see more cultivated fields. This field is interesting as it lays fallow. Maybe they're swapping out crops or something. A farmer will probably know why this is uncultivated. We pass over a straight road. It's just the same on the left side of the plane as it is here on the right side. It goes for miles and miles, straight like that. This field is interesting because it looks like they used a row of trees to mark the boundaries of two fields. Once we're past Memphis, we climb a little bit to stay above a scattered cloud layer that's starting to form. We fly across the Mississippi River. From above, you can see the twists and the turns the river makes as it heads south. At this point, although we are down low, we're still getting a nice, smooth ride. As we approach Little Rock Air Force Base, I dial their frequency in the radio at top left. Call them up, but I get no answer. Their control zone tops at 2,800 feet per the chart, so we cross at 3,300 feet to remain clear. I photograph our position so that if there's ever a question whether we violated a control zone, I can show our position and altitude. Just a CYA kind of a thing, you know. The Air Force Base slips below us, and we fly well north of the adjoining restricted area. At last, we're in the pattern for Conway Regional Airport. Let's land. Here's the airport terminal. I'll show you a few views on the inside of it as well. And I have to tell you, these are just simply the nicest people here that you'll find anywhere. We spent Father's Day at Uncle Chucky's house and we had two types of pool, and Gail made friends with Bodie the dog. A few snapshots around the airplane, and that wrapped up our trip. The chart shows the second leg of our trip, which unfortunately is at this point not a nonstop flight. The on-ship green line on this chart proves that we avoided the Class C airspace at Little Rock, and the restricted airspace as well. Not that I worry, but sometimes it's good to have evidence. We spent a couple of days with family and had a good old time, but now we must head home. With a wiggle of the wings to say goodbye, we are on our way.
Conway Regional Airport shrinks behind us as we climb to 5,500 feet and head east. With 129 knots ground speed, we're doing almost 150 miles per hour. Gail captures the interesting loops and twists this river makes as we head eastward. Although we started the flight high, I became concerned that the clouds were shifting from widely scattered to more densely broken. I decided to drop down lower again to remain below the cloud deck. So here we are at 2,500 feet as we pass south of the Memphis Class B airspace. A little further on, the clouds again became scattered. So I climbed us up to take advantage of the smooth air and the better tailwind. But wouldn't you know it, from above, it once again looked like the clouds were forming up. So I dropped us once more below the deck. We stayed there for the rest of the flight. Although it looked tempting every time I glanced up at the clear blue sky above. We passed south of Huntsville, Alabama with one hour of flight time left and two hours of fuel on board. We knew we were headed into deteriorating weather, but expected it to remain VFR, which it did. Gail continued monitoring weather forecasts as we proceeded east, and I watched as the weather was developing north of our flight path. We remained clear of it all and landed safely at home. FlightAware shows our progress and our several altitude changes en route. This chart shows our completed flight from Conway, Arkansas to Jasper, Georgia in 3 hours and 32 minutes. And yes, it was non-stop. If you like the story of our trip, be sure to subscribe because we're going to be going somewhere new soon. See you then.